Okay, here's two examples of going one step farther. So notice what, what we talked about. When, when you locate that there is a variable underneath the radical, to undo the radical or to cancel it, you would square. But if you square, uh, and the squaring and the square root would cancel, but if you square the right side, you have to square the left. So now you have x squared is equal to 36 minus 5x. Well, now what you've got is a quadratic. So remember, when you have a quadratic, you want one side to equal 0. Since the quadratic is positive, the coefficient is positive, we would add 5x, and we would set, subtract 36 to both sides. So I'm going to start that over here. So x squared we're going to add 5x, and we're going to subtract 36. Now the right side is equal. Well, now you've got a quadratic, and I think we did this a little bit last year. Factors of negative 36 that add up to positive 5. Well, you know, think about there's 6 and 6, 3 and 12, ah, 9 and 4. One has, it, since it's negative, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. So nine would be positive, the four would be negative, and they would add to five. So now you have x subtract four times x plus nine, or you could do it the other order. And then remember, the opposite, what's the opposite of negative four? Positive four. What's the opposite of nine? negative 9. So those are your two possibilities, and now we go back and check. So we have x is equal to the square root of 36 minus 5x. So let's try 4. So 4 is equal to the square root of 36 minus 5 times 4. Well, 5 times 4 is 20. 36 subtract 20 is 16 is the is the square root of 16, 4? Yes. So now let's try negative 9. Negative 9 is equal to the square root of 36 minus 5 times negative 9. Well, negative times negative is a positive. So now you're going to have 36 and 41. When you add those together, you get 81. Is negative 9 the square root of... Now remember, you can have positive and negative roots, but unless you're told we want the negative version, you would actually say no to this. Um, I believe the teacher would be looking for this one, that negative 9 is extraneous solution. Even though you, you could argue that's technically correct, but you're only asking for the negatives or positives, um, not in this situation. All right, let's keep go. Oh, I'm going to have to hold on just a second. There we go. Okay. Notice on the right side we'd square, but look at what you have. You have an expression. So you'd have to put parentheses around it and square that. Well, remember a binomial squared means the binomial times the binomial, and your teacher might teach you to do FOIL, that or the double distributive. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. So we did the distributive. You also did the f and the o. And then we've got negative 2. We're going to do this distributive. Negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. The negative 2x and negative 2x can be added together. So x squared minus 4x plus 4. So when we square this side, we now have x squared subtract 4x plus 4. And when we square the left side, the radical sign goes away, leaving 4x subtract 3. And now we want this side one of the sides equals 0, and since the x squared is positive, so we're going to subtract 4x and add 3. We're going to subtract 4x and add 3. 
So x squared, negative 4x plus negative 4x is negative 8x. 4 plus 3 is 7. And now we've got a quadratic that hopefully will factor to two binomials. So you say, what are factors of 7 that add up to negative 8? Well, if 7 is positive and this is negative, that means both of these will be negative. Well, the only factors of 7 are 7 and 1. So x subtract 7, x subtract 1. But you have to come up with what x is equal to, and you always do the opposite. Because it's whatever causes it to be 0. The opposite of negative 7 is positive 7. The opposite of negative 1 is 1. And now we put it back up there. So x minus 2. And I'll do it. We'll check both of those numbers. So let's try 1. So 4 times 1, and I'll put a 1 there. 4 minus 3, so that's the square root of 1. Uh, square root of 1 is 1. 1 subtract 2 is negative 1. Now, again, you might want to clarify with your teacher that the square root of 1 could be positive or negative when you're dealing with quadratics. However, when it's just the square root like this, they may say, no, we want the positive version. And so therefore, 1 would be extraneous. Let's try 7. So now we 4 times 7, subtract 3. So that's 28, subtract 3. So that's square root of 25, which is 5. And then 7, subtract 2, is 5. So in this example, the answer is x is equal to 7, and x cannot equal negative 1 because it is extraneous. All right, that's it.